Hi, welcome back to the second video of Unit 10, Day 4, Surface Area and Volume of Prisms and Cylinders. So we are going to be applying the formulas for lateral area, just the sides, total surface area, the sides plus the bases, and the volume of prisms and cylinders. Okay, so my first shape here, I can see I have hexagon or pentagons for my bases, and then I have rectangles, of course, for my sides. This is a prism, so we'll use our prism formula, prism formulas, okay? All right, so my first formula that I'm going to be looking at is my lateral area, because this does want me to find all three, two areas and one volume, okay? All right, so when I start with lateral area, the lateral area is the perimeter of the base times the height. So what I need to do is I need to come off to the side and I need to figure out, okay, what is the perimeter of the base? So my base is a pentagon. What I will do 99% of the time when I'm doing these problems is I will sketch my base separately and find, and I know that doesn't look very pretty, but I know I can see that all my sides are eight. So my perimeter then is going to be eight and there's five sides. My perimeter is gonna be 40, eight times five, okay? So I know my perimeter is 40. I can plug that in for P, okay? My lateral area, just the sides, equals P times H. Now the height is, remember, the height from one base to the other base. So from one pentagon to the other pentagon, my height is eight. So my lateral area then is going to be 40 times eight, which is 40 times eight, 320. My units here are inches. And since it's 40 inches, my perimeter, eight inches all the way around, 40 inches times eight inches and its area, we know our units are squared. So that is my lateral area, okay? Next thing I wanna do is my surface area, my total surface area, which we're gonna use as an S. And my total surface area is pH plus two bases. Now what's kind of neat is I've already done the pH part, right? That's the lateral area. Well, I already know what that is. I can substitute that in, right? I can replace this pH with what it equals, 320. So then my surface area, my total surface area equals 320 plus 2 times the area of the base. So I'm gonna have to figure out what the area of the base is. So off to the side where I drew that base, I'm going to use this to figure out, okay, what is the area of the base? So capital B is the area of the base. Now here's where we have to think about just this shape, okay? This is a, I know it doesn't look like a regular pentagon, but it is. So my formula, and remember you might need to open up your formula sheet, for a regular pentagon or a regular polygon of any is one half the apothem, little a, times the perimeter, capital P. So that's gonna be one half, and then I don't have the apothem here, but if I look back at the picture, I can see. Remember the apothem is that distance from the center to the side, which they told me is 5.5 inches. So one half of 5.5 inches times P, which we already found the perimeter, it's 40. So my base, the area of my base is going to be one half, I'm typing in the calculator, times 5.5 times 40. That's going to give me 110. And again, if I wanted to add the units in, I would say, okay, it's 5.5 inches and 40 inches, so inches and inches, inches squared. Okay. So my base is 110 inches squared. Okay, my total surface area then is 320, that lateral area, plus two bases, two times 110 is 220. 
So my total surface area then is 320 plus 220, which is 540. And since this is inches squared and this was inches squared, when you do inches squared plus inches squared, you still have inches squared because it's still area. Okay, all right, we have one more thing to look at and that is volume. Let's go remind ourselves what the volume formula is. My volume is the area of the base times the height of the prism. The area of the base times the height of the prism. So my volume equals the area of the base, which we already found. Well, I'm gonna type, write my formula down. The area of the base times the height of the prism. Volume equals area of the base, height of the prism. The area of the base we already found, that was 110. The height of the prism we already found, that was eight. So my volume, I can put this in the calculator, 110 times eight, my volume is 880. Now look at my units, we're still dealing with inches, but remember this was inches squared and my eight was just regular all inches. And when we multiply inches squared times inches, that becomes inches cubed. Whenever we do volume, we think of it as cubic units. Anytime you do volume, you look at cubic units. Okay, let's do one more of these and then we'll do cylinders in our last video. All right, so here I'm going to First, let's write all our formulas. So I know I'm gonna start by finding the lateral area, which is just P times H. So my lateral area, I'm gonna need the perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. Then I'm going to look at the total surface area, which is the PH plus two bases. So that's gonna be my pH, which I'm already gonna have found, plus two bases. Okay, then volume, which my volume is the area of the base times the height of the prism. So my volume is gonna be the area of the base times the height of the prism. Okay, the first thing I always do is I say, well, let me see if I can figure out what my base information is. I always start with base information. So the perimeter of my base, well, first let's figure out what is the base, right? When I look at this, I can tell that my base is not one of these rectangles. My base has to be these triangles, right? So it's this triangle because parallel to it is this triangle. And as I'm tracing the second one, I see something really important. I see there's a 90 degree angle on the base. So my base is a right triangle. This is a right triangular prism. That's important when I draw my base here because you'll see in a moment, it's gonna be really helpful. This 90 degree angle, the three and the four come together at that 90 degree angle. And then the five is the hypotenuse. So my perimeter equals three plus four plus five, which is, I believe, 12. Oops, not another plus. We'll just add a zero in there, 12, perfect. All right, so my perimeter is 12. The area of the base, I do like to just go and find the area of the base, is going to be, this is a triangle. So if I look at my formula sheet, it's one half the base times the height. So that's gonna be one half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. Remember your base and your height of a triangle have to come together at a 90 degree angle. So I can use the three and the four as the base and the height. Okay, so three for the, I put three as the base and four as the height. Okay, so one half of three times four, one half times three times four is six. So the area of my base 
is 6. So the area of my base here is 6. The area of my base here is 6. Okay? All right, so then as I'm working, that's all I need from my base is the perimeter and its area. So now let's go back and see if we can find our answers. The lateral area is the perimeter of the base, which we know is 12, times the height of the prism. So from one, let me switch to a height color, from one base to the other base. How long are these heights? These heights are three. So my H here is three. Now notice my H here was four. So we have two different values for H's and that's okay because they're different areas of the problem. So my height here is three. My height here is three. Notice I didn't fill this one in because I'm just waiting till I do the math over here. My lateral area then is 12 times three, which is 36. And these are feet and it's area, so feet squared. If my lateral area is 36 square feet, I can plug that in over here. So then my total surface area is 36 plus two times six, which is 12. My total surface area is 36 plus 12, which is 48. Again, this is area, so it's feet squared. And then my volume is six times three, which is 18. So my volume equals 18. Remember the base is the area, so it's squared, and then a regular height is not squared. Squared plus not squared is, or times not squared, is cubed. Volume is always cubed, okay? So there's some practice. Again, the very first thing I would always, always do anytime you are working with prisms is first find the area and perimeter of the base. That's always the first thing I'm going to do anytime I'm working with prisms. In fact, that's so important, I'm going to write it on this page of the notes also. First, find the perimeter and the area of the base. Always do that first anytime you're working with a prism. All right, come on back and we will apply our formulas to cylinders. Thanks so much for watching.